the masked magician will now attempt to perform one of Harry Houdini's most famous escapes, the one that was once promoted with the slogan, failure means a drowning death. The magician displays a large milk can that's been filled with water. This particular can has a bulletproof plate glass window, an aftermarket addition, so that we can see what the magician is up to once he's inside. His beautiful assistants remove the lid, and I think you can guess what's going to happen next. The magician steals his courage and squeezes into the can of water. In Houdini's day, shipping milk in these large metal barrels was commonplace, so milk cans weren't out of the ordinary. However, attempting to escape from one filled with water was quite an unthinkable act. It's a tight fit, but he manages to fit his arms inside and force himself down. The water cascades to the floor. It's real, all right, and wet. Step back, ladies. The magician will take a few deep breaths before he can plunge all the way into the can. That mask isn't helping matters either. He'll test his ability by trying to hold his breath in this very intimidating can. Try to hold your breath with him. His assistants place the metal lid in place. There he is, behind the glass. Remember what I said about drowning? It's important to remember that this is a world-class magician, and at no time should you attempt any of his dangerous tricks at home. The magician is doing a test run of his lung power, only to see how long he can last once he's really locked inside. How about you? Are you still holding your own? He seems to be doing OK, but remember, his hands will be shackled just like Houdini's were 100 years ago. It's nearly a minute now. That's about all he can take. His assistants remove the lid, and it seems like he's happy to be breathing again. Did you last as long as he did? He's shaken, but ready to go on. The extra hardware will make the escape even more death-defying. The magician willingly holds out his wrists for a pair of regulation police handcuffs. Wonder where she got those. Since Houdini was known as the handcuff king, this is only fitting. A few more deep breaths, and the magician is again ready to squirm his way back into the can. It is returned to its position. And this time, the assistants secure it with heavy-duty padlocks. They'd better hurry. Even experienced divers would find it terrifying to hold their breath while handcuffed and locked inside a cold steel can. Try holding your breath again and imagine that you've got no way out. Not so easy, is it? There we see him struggling with the handcuffs. Even if he smuggled a lock pick into the can, reaching the locks on the outside would be impossible. Houdini was right. Failure could mean a drowning death. He wrestles with the cuffs for a few more seconds. Maybe he needs some privacy. His assistants raise a curtain in front of the can. By now, he's been locked underwater for more than a minute and hasn't made any progress. This is longer than he lasted the first time before he had to be let out. He must be starting to panic. Are you still holding your breath? 
It's been 90 seconds now and still no sign of him. The assistants better do something. Get him out of there. He's safe. What a relief. I bet even Houdini didn't have a welcoming committee like this. So how did the magician escape before drowning in the old-time milk can? Here are the secrets. First off, the handcuffs look solid, but they've been specially rigged to pop open in an instant. Cuffs like these are almost always used in underwater escapes to minimize the risk of danger. When the magician first plunges into the can, he displaces a lot of water, leaving more room for air to breathe. It's a good acting job, but in reality, he has plenty of space to move freely. The first time we see him behind the glass, we're convinced that he has to hold his breath while inside the can. But check out the lid. The dome-shaped top allows him some extra room to reach up and take a breath whenever he needs to. While we're distracted by his hands behind the porthole, his head is safely above the waterline beneath this dome. Opening the lid to put on the handcuffs only adds more drama to the escape. The lid is locked into place with real padlocks that never get open. They don't have to, because the neck of the can is surrounded by a false collar held on by these rivets. The assistants remove the rivets when they attach the locks. Here we see how easily the lid and the collar are removed. Next, the sheet is raised. The magician can see the sheet through the glass and knows that it's time to make his escape. He simply pushes up on the lid and it effortlessly pops off, locks and all. All he has to do now is climb out of the can. Once the magician is outside, he replaces the lid and stands next to the can, waiting to make his miraculous appearance. The girls provide the hero's welcome, and the illusion is complete.